uh, to start with uh, Christoph. He is oh, he's going to give us a presentation on what what PED really is all about. You know, um, PED as a concept, but also PED as a program. The PET 2 program will be uh, launching soon, and we would like to tell you all about it, and also especially uh, tell you about what you can what you can gain from this by taking part. That's what Christoph will be uh, talking about, and then uh, after him, I will also add a few remarks, uh, my two cents on uh, why Platform in Data is doing this call with uh, with Christoph's team. Uh, to uh, to to put you all into contact more and more closely into contact with with Brussels with the European Union. After that, we will have plenty of time for discussions and questions and everything that you would like to to ask and, and talk about. So, uh, Christoph, I will stop my presentation and you can take the floor. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Okay, all good, all visible? Yes. You? Great. So thank you again, Taku. Thanks, Mark, for having me. And uh, I think that's a great um, opportunity to to bring a bit closer uh, the concept of positive energy district, if you not yet know about that. But um, there is quite um, still, it's a rather new concept and uh, there are a lot of discussions and a lot of different approaches towards positive energy districts. And um, yeah, I'll try to bring that together and, and give you an overview of what we are dealing with, how we how we approach positive energy districts and um, the framework of the PET program, but also of JPR Urban Europe as the cover, uh, the European cover for the program. Um, and what um, benefits, opportunities, participation, participation in our calls can bring for you as, as cities and municipalities. So just a short formal overview of what the PET program is. Um, it is a, a transnational intergovernmental research and innovation program. So uh, with currently around 20 countries involved, you see that in the map on the right. Um, it is, as I said already, um, part of JPI Urban Europe, a joint programming initiative um, on bringing forward uh, the most burning urban issues with regard to research and innovation, but not only that, but to create impact on the ground within city administrations, involve stakeholders, etc. JPI Urban Europe has an experience of more than 10 years in that field. And I think it is a very useful platform to be engaged in also as a city um, to also support your own ambitions regarding climate neutrality and, and the energy transition and all other urban topics. So have a look at, uh, in, in general, not only in the PET program, what JPR, JPR Urban Europe is offering um, regarding calls and, and other activities. Uh, the PET program has a clear mission of uh, having at least 100 positive energy districts in Europe by 2025. Um, but saying that, we want to include the whole approach towards positive energy districts in a very comprehensive integrated urban planning strategy. So uh, the framework is to create really PET's positive energy districts as part, as a tool, um, for urban strategies towards climate neutral cities, which is now the big catchword uh, in where we should move with not only with uh, cities, but with the continent and the global development in general. Um, and PET can be, a very, uh, can be a useful tool to, towards that. But let me take a step back and show you a short video on what PETs is, are all about. Climate change is a global phenomenon that strongly affects cities and urban areas. At the same time, cities are major contributors to climate change themselves, as they are responsible for over 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But cities can also be a key towards sustainable solutions. 
Positive energy districts, or PEDs, are opportunities to drive transformation towards climate-neutral cities. Positive energy districts are urban neighborhoods that generate an annual surplus of renewable energy and net-zero greenhouse gas emissions. They do this by using energy very efficiently. Alongside being consumers of energy, PEDs produce renewable energy. And last, positive energy districts offer a flexible system for energy use and storage and dynamic integration into regional energy systems. Sounds great, but for PEDs to be successful, we need city authorities, utilities, real estate planners, investors and inhabitants who work hand-in-hand -hand to design tailor-made solutions for their neighbourhoods based on innovative approaches and examples created by R&I activities. All to make our urban areas livable, inclusive and sustainable. Find out more about JPI Urban Europe's PED programme, which aims at initiating 100 positive energy districts in Europe. Ah, so, um, yeah, let's dig a bit deeper into that. Just a, um, just a few um, words regarding the definition of pets. Um, this is a, sc a screenshot from, from the video. Um, and we have developed uh, as a program a kind of framework definition of positive energy districts because the problem is or also the opportunity we are facing is that by definition positive energy districts are very local uh, projects and it's very hard to find a definition that applies to all climatic conditions to all uh, national frameworks building culture uh, availability of renewable energy sources etc so there are a lot of different, very locally focused, and locally adapted definitions for positive energy districts. And we can't kind of constantly working on how to bring that together um, and, and kind, of, kind of lift it to European level to find the smallest common denominator. What are elements and structures that are and indicators also that are actually needed for defining a positive energy district. We're still working on that. What we have uh, yet uh, achieved is at least a short definition, a very generic definition of positive energy districts um, that goes like this. Positive energy districts are energy efficient and energy flexible urban areas or groups of connected buildings which produce net zero greenhouse gas emissions and actively manage an annual local or regional surplus production of renewable energy. Um, most of that is has been mentioned in, in the video itself. Um, second part of the definition is they require integration of different systems and infrastructures and interaction between buildings, the users and the regional energy, mobility and ICT systems, while securing the energy supply and a good life for all in line with social, economic and environmental sustainability. So what you can see here is that we really try to frame the whole pet ambition in a very comprehensive way. It's not about, it is about technological solution, but it is very much also about uh, process innovation, it is about um, using or utilizing positive energy districts as a tool to transform the cities themselves and taking in, uh, into consideration quality of aspects just like co quality of life, we have that here as guiding principles, resilience, security of energy supply, sustainability uh, goals, inclusiveness, affordability, we don't want to create neighborhoods that are super exclusive areas for, for those who can afford that. Uh, we need enablers, a political vision and a governance framework. We need uh, new approaches towards the integration of energy and urban planning. We need the active involvement of pro problem owners, that's what we call the key stakeholders, and citizens themselves. And we need to tackle the whole question and uh, of ICT and data management, which is an enabler, in an, an enabler, but also poses some challenges in the, in, in the development. And all that is needed to um, support the optimization of the, the three main energy functions of a positive energy district, which is energy efficiency strategies, energy production strategies, both local 
but also integrated in uh, in a regional or national energy system and the whole question of energy flexibility how to, so how to deal with storage how to deal with um, uh, seasonal peaks of renewable energy uh, generation um, to balance uh, um, uh, shifts in 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 demand um, for energy that is all uh, under under the energy fl flexibility function so uh, quite a complex system we need to tackle and let me see yeah and there are a lot of challenges uh, we are facing um we have done a lot of uh, stakeholder involvement workshops and and events and one of the foremost uh, obviously one of the foremost challenges for pet development is a proper financing and the development um, of sustainable business models let's call it like that applying an, an a life cycle analysis approach so regarding um, the the costs not only of of the, the operation and the building of of a positive energy district but from uh, gathering the material to uh, the disposal of material at the end of the life circle uh, in order to be sustainable. We need new forms of public-private partnership in that regard. Um, the whole aspect of integrated planning, I've mentioned that before, with the specific aspect here of um, including and mainstreaming energy planning in urban planning processes. The whole questions of question of governance, Pets, in, at least to some degree, require some decentralization strategies. They require bottom-up, the involvement of bottom-up um, um, developments like energy communities. We need to overcome regulatory barriers, um, especially, and that of course differs from country to country or from city to city, but most of the regulatory uh, barriers are, uh, re are regarding the energy flexibility area, and 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 the construction uh, rules and reg regulations uh, so we need to address that i mentioned that before data management and ict the whole uh, gdpr question um, is very much on the front when it comes to um, to flexible dealing with energy um, energy use and energy efficiency and one of the key topics we're trying uh, also to uh, address in the upcoming call is how do we transform the existing neighborhoods? It is, let's let's say like that, it is rather easy to um, establish a positive energy district on a green in a greenfield development, building new houses and, and new urban development areas. Because there is the space, you can you can plan from the beginning uh, in, with regard to energy efficiency and ener local energy production, etc. It is much harder to do that in a in an existing, possibly even historical urban area, where we have to consider co completely different things as well. <clears throat> uh, uh, regarding uh, the building heritage, uh, dealing with complex ownership ownership structures, it's not so easy to create a common a joint effort in an area where we have hundreds uh, uh, of uh, local owners, building owners, infrastructure owners, but also um, hundreds or even thousands of citizens already living there that need to be part of the process. So this whole transformation question um, is very much uh, um, connected with the whole issue of uh, urban retrofitting, urban revitalization of neighborhoods. and. Um, that's really something we, we we need to look into. So we kind of clustered the the main the key areas of action regarding pet development in four clusters, so to say. That's preparing the energy system for pets, integrated urban planning, governance, pets for people, and preparing mainstreaming and replication. Preparing mainstreaming and replication means to synthesize uh, results from existing projects or existing studies and, and identify, um, as I mentioned before, the, the key elements um, for pet development and with that supporting cities um, in, in finding their own way of implementing positive energy districts developing tools, guidelines, uh, learnings from, from exchanges between, uh, between cities, etc. 
Um, I mentioned that also before, the pet ecosystem, we, we very much focus on um, the requirements of cities themselves. What what do they need? What are their requirements? What are their challenges with regard to implementing positive energy districts? So the whole program is not so much an industry-driven program, but very much a um, a program that addresses cities, urban planning in general, uh, which of course is connected uh, with the real estate industry and in the case of positive energy districts very much connected um, with uh, utilities, service providers, energy providers. And we need to find um, good and working forms of collaboration between these three stakeholders. We always call them um, uh, problem, problem owners, Bedarfsträger in German. Um, so those who are actually affected and those who actually uh, uh, initiate the processes uh, towards urban transformation, including, of course, and being in constant interaction with civil society and research and innovation. So one of the key goals of the program is also to strengthen and improve cooperation between specifically cities and research and innovation to make it more to make it a less project oriented cooperation or not only project oriented but kind of a, com a, a continuous um, cooperation between a kind of ping pong between the needs from the cities and the answers from research and innovation to, to really foster this <clears throat> and strengthen the connections between those two um, to, no less to summarize, what we try to do is, with all the challenges needing to be addressed, with all the solutions, innovations uh, coming out of the program regarding um, process innovation, technological innovation, societal innovation, positive energy districts are contributing to ambitions and goals that have been set out uh, both on a glo global level. You see the United Nations um, uh, um, Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, um, the new urban agenda, Euro Europe has launched the Green Deal, there is an upcoming mission on climate neutral and smart cities uh, by the European Commission, the PET program also works uh, uh, of course in the direction of contributing to this climate, uh, to this mission of climate neutral and smart cities, the ambition there is to have um, at least 100 climate neutral neighborhoods, no cities, until 2030. So this is a kind please of don't. a yes. Sorry to interrupt. We we have a question. Please, I, I, I just don't see it because I only see my screen. I'm sorry. I'm looking yes. to it. No problem. Please. Yeah, I, I raised my hand uh, because uh, my question is, is there something to say about uh, the scale? Um, you're talking about districts, but um, how big is a district? <laughs> or is no, there... Tried, mm, yeah, good good and very uh, where, very often raised question. No, I think the, the physical system boundary, so the, the project area, it is really about uh, moving from... Uh, we do know positive energy buildings, for example, but the, the, there are examples for that. But the, the, the key ambition of the program is to transform or to go beyond the, the individual building to really uh, um, try to shape a community uh, uh, of positive uh, of a positive energy neighborhood or something like that. So it, it's anything that goes beyond let's say two or three or four buildings that are connected. So district, I, we don't actually, I don't like very much, it's a, it's a, it's a policy, uh, it's a policy wording. I don't like the word district itself because it, it at least in German, it, it kind of brings up the idea of a kind of a formal district, um, which is not the case. It is about connecting buildings and including not only the buildings themselves, but also the public space between them. And that's that's the idea of the, of the urban neighborhood or the neighborhood and district here. Okay. Any other questions at this point? Okay. If you, if you have any questions, you can uh, you can uh, save them up for later or put them already in the chat. Exactly. 
Um, it's, it's not going to take me much longer. <laughs> Just to give you a hint. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the mission on, on climate neutral and smart cities, but also the new, new European Bauhaus, which is quite an interesting initiative. I'm not exactly sure at the moment what is where it's actually leading and how it will exactly look like. But the idea at the new, new European Bauhaus is a um, uh, supporting projects or initiatives that that um, that more include uh, not only technological or smart city aspects, but also um, artistic uh, grassroots initiatives, um, finding new, uh, introducing or reintroducing the word beautiful, for example. Um, so it's not only about uh, efficient solutions, but also so, but very much um, about uh, creating lively neighborhoods where people feel well in that direction. So a very impact ori orientated initiative. And I'm actually myself looking forward and quite cu curious what, would, what will come out of that. Um, yes, um, just to to mention, uh, there is already a lot of, uh, I mentioned it before, uh, a lot of activity going on in Europe uh, regarding positive energy districts or projects that are on the way uh, to, or potentially on the way towards positive energy districts. We have compiled a booklet, which is already rather a book than a booklet, um, integrating um, in this version, uh, I think more than 60 cases of uh, projects uh, included the, uh, a QR code here where you can download um, this booklet. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we have the diversity of approaches across the continent. And one ambition is to bring all these initi initiatives together um, regarding the definition, but also regarding other um, pathways towards the, the general pathways uh, towards positive energy districts in order to facilitate mainstreaming across also smaller cities, um, replication across the Europe in different contexts. So what we're really aiming at is, is providing that framework to facilitate the mainstreaming of positive energy districts. Have a look at this booklet if you haven't yet. There are quite interesting examples from different contexts, as you can see on the map. Um, just a few words what the program, uh, the PET program is focusing on. It is very much, of course, uh, the pooling and upscaling uh, of national research and innovation funding towards positive energy districts implementation. So again, the JPR Urban Europe and the PET program as a sub program of JPR Urban Europe is a transnational agreement between countries. It's not an EU project, but it is working in coordination and in cooperation with the European Commission and is developing calls co-funded by the European by the European Union. But basically is it, it is very much about, as written here, the pooling of national research, research and innovation funding, put that together, develop joint initiatives for funding projects towards PET implementation. Uh, we, are, we are having a call agenda with roughly 100 Euro, million euros until 2025, but it always depends on the specific uh, contributions by countries for a specific call. Um, but it's not only about um, funding calls, it is also or funding projects, it is also very much um, about creating impact beyond the research projects. Um, regarding to technology relevance, capacity buildings with among stakeholders, specifically specifically against city uh, administrations, and uh, also regarding the process design, governance aspects, etc., supporting climate action, energy transition, and focusing on the existing urban infrastructure. Uh, the focus on uh, the support and empowerment of the so-called problem owners, and creating a European wide pad ambition. A glimpse to the future uh, with the new Horizon Europe uh, framework program of the uh, European Union. Um, we are <laughs> it's 
applying for a uh, so-called European partnership, which is co going to be called Driving Urban Transitions, which is will be co-funded by the European Union. And I'm saying that hopefully because this submission date for the proposal for the partnership is on the 19th of October. But we are positive that um, we will uh, be able to, yeah, to 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 organize this this partnership, and this partnership really aims to bring all together um, uh, the um, innovation activities towards urban transition uh, processes. So we really want to be um, uh, the kind of uh, the initiative to 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 connect to when it comes to transforming um, European cities again this is uh, this is um, uh, a, a member states driven initi initiative of now 25 to 30 country European countries so most of them not all EU also outside the EU um, but will be co-funded by um, by the European Commission and in, the, in in this driving urban transitions partnership, the positive energy districts uh, uh, program will be a so-called transition pathway next to the transition pathways, circular urban economies and the 15 minute cities. So a, a pathway on mobility um, and on um, circularity uh, and, and regenerative economies. So this is hopefully also going to happen uh, from next year. This year, and I'm coming to the end. Um, okay, I will skip that. This is just on the on the approach of um, JPR Urban Europe, challenge driven, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, um, and uh, uh, the aim of connecting uh, um, national institutions uh, with the aim of creating impact uh, within cities, as I mentioned. Uh, create impact in um, cross-sector urban policies and of course um, the most obvious one probably um, uh, to support challenge-driven research and innovation policies but uh, uh, I will again highlight that capacity building in cities is one of the key ambitions. Just to show you uh, the JP Urban Europe journey um, if you go to the green part uh, joint calls and projects uh, in the last 10 years. Uh, there have been nine calls between 2011 and 2019 with more than 84 um, funded projects and 558 beneficiaries, so project partners from 34 countries. So this is quite already quite a portfolio JP Urban Europe is having. Regarding the upcoming call, this is still under JP Urban Europe and not the Driving Urban Transitions Partnership. Um, this is uh, addressing uh, the positive energy districts. Um, it's called uh, positive energy districts and neighborhoods for climate neutrality. Topics are building on a call we have already launched in 2020, the so-called PET pilot call. I introduced the link here so you can check it out after the uh, when I sent uh, the, the slides to you. And the focus of this call, I cannot go into detail here because it's not been launched yet, will be on transformation processes and process innovation um, um, regarding positive energy districts. It will be a one stage call uh, involving uh, seven countries, Austria, Belgium, Italy, the Netherlands, Romania, Sweden and Turkey. And as of now, uh, the opening um, of the call for project proposals will be um, in on the 13th of October with the earliest project start in mid June next year. Um, what would be your benefit? We highly encourage you to uh, participate as partners in project consortia for this pet call because there is a um, requirement in the call to involve cities in uh, as partners in 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 this call because we really think it is important that cities are partners with research with companies from the beginning when developing urban uh, projects 
Um, JPI Urban Europe offers you a range of different activities that support can that may support you uh, your ambitions regarding climate goals and the energy transitions. We have a format called Agora that brings together um, different stakeholders, cities, but uh, project managers, etc., regarding uh, specific topics. So that is a an opportunity. We also have have other events, but specifically the Agora would be um, an opportunity for you. Uh, to really make the needs and requirements from cities and other stakeholders heard, to be part of co-creation processes um, of policy briefs for, for, for policy levels on both national and transnational policies, the elaboration of research and innovation needs for a challenge-driven innovation, create input from your perspective for upcoming uh, the, the, the for the upcoming uh, co-funded uh, driving urban transition calls uh, exchange and cooperation with other cities and projects so we offer that platform um, hopefully we can also can do it physically in the near future to really visit other cities other projects and create with that the opportunity um, for peer-to-peer -peer learning, uh, discussing challenges that different cities have. And as I mentioned before, uh, fostering cooperation with research and innovation. And we also invite you to be an ambassador and partner for dissemination of project results, of joint findings, of your challenges. Um, so what we're trying to do is to offer you an opportunity to to integrate in a, in a European into an European context and with that, bring forward your own uh, ambitions regarding regarding the bur most burning uh, topics for urban development. And with that, I would like to thank you. Here's my email address. So you can also, if you don't have a question now, you can also ask me later. And with that, thank you very much for your invitation again. That's perfect. Thank you, Christoph, for such a comprehensive and clear, uh, clear introduction to PED. Maybe Before Mark, we... uh, maybe uh, just to to are there any more questions about the information Christoph gave to you? Uh, maybe there are questions at this point. If not, then we can continue, Mark, and then we have all the questions. Uh, we'll have plenty the... of time afterwards. Yeah, my presentation here is just is just a few uh, uh, an additional two cents on what uh, Christoph already uh, told us about. Just a few extra words on really answering the question why are we are doing this at Platform in the Nether? And it's, it's a very, and there's a very simple, simple answer uh, to that. And that is that Europe is the future and there's nothing exaggerated about it. You know, when you want to become sustainable, if you want to usher your town, your, your municipality into, the, some, into a better version of itself, we expect that Europe will be the place to be. You need to think European and act locally. Um, and there's a lot to gain at, in, uh, from Europe. Um, as you see in the center of the screen, there's a number there. And it's a very big number. 2018 billion euros is what is the money that will be reserved uh, for spending by the European Union in the coming seven years. Uh, it comes from two pillars. Uh, the first one is the long-term budget, which was uh, agreed upon last year. Um, as you might know, uh, the previous seven-year framework uh, has ended and a new one has started. And uh, the European leaders agreed on, on, on a new long-term budget, which is uh, supplemented by the Next Generation EU Fund, which is commonly known as simply as the Corona Fund. This is supposed to help the European economy recover from the coronavirus and everything that it and, and the havoc that it wreaked uh, over the over the past year. Uh, together, these two funds comprise of 2018 billion euros in, in normal Dutch that would be 2 billion euro, uh, which is a lot of money. And, there, and that money is going into a lot of different things, uh, including the PAD2 project, the PAD2 call that we just talked about. Um, yeah, and the role of Platform 31 here is, is also quite clear. Uh, we already have a lot of 
uh, expertise, a lot of experience in in, beca- in being uh, a link between the European Union, Brussels, and the Dutch municipalities on a local scale. Just last year, or it wasn't even this year, at the beginning of this year, we introduced our network card of OPA, which is uh, which gives uh, different uh, for different cities, different municipalities in the Netherlands already maps out all the connections that there are to different European networks, which are a lot, uh, which which places us right in the middle of the, of the spider's web uh, when it comes to uh, European networking, and of course we're also a uh, contact point, a national contact point for the Urbac network, which is uh, a knowledge network, a net- knowledge dissemination, knowledge sharing network, uh, which has already existed for a few years now and is also gaining ever more traction. And together with, uh, together, with, you know, at, from these um, examples, you can see that Platform 31 has already got a lot of uh, experience. Uh, and would also like to help you in getting involved into the, in the path to call. That's why that's why we were asked so to take part in it. Um, and that's and there's a good reason for that. You know, um, the European Union has made it very clear that over the past few years that they want to be closer to um, to the average European citizens, the people on the street. Uh, they feel that there is a gap that's too big. Uh, between them and what's happening on locals on a local scale, and they would like to close that gap, and, if, and we would like to fill uh, to help them close that gap, and also help you become more acquainted with whatever the European Union can help you with, uh, with whatever the European Union can give you to to help you become more sustainable, to help you become a better version of yourselves as municipalities. So that's a whole mouthful. Um, that's that was uh, the small addition that I had uh, for a crystal story. That's a bigger context in, w- in which we are operating. Pat two is only really just the beginning of this uh, of what we want to do. This whole network group is not just does not just exist for Pat two. Uh, we expect it to grow and to also involve other uh, other kinds of programs, other kinds of projects on the European level um, that we would like to you to get acquainted with in the future. And Pat 2 will be an excellent opportunity to already, you know, um, to to exercise a bit, to try out to try out how to how to fill in those forms, how to get how to get some funding from the European Union, how how it all works. And that's that's our main interest here. Uh, that's why we would we would like you to become excited about this and to uh, to introduce it to introduce you to Pat 2. Right. That was my uh, my. Uh, my addition to Christoph's presentation. I would like now like to uh, go ahead to uh, discussions and questions. I already saw some things pop up in the chat, and if, uh, perhaps you've uh, you've also written down something on your on your.